The University of Wisconsin Oshkosh Fox Cities Campus assists the city of Menasha with video recordings of city meetings. Menasha residents and interested parties can get information about city meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents from the city website, www.cityofmenasha-wi.gov. To express opinions about City of Menasha issues or these broadcasts, contact the Mayor's Office, 920-967-3608. Contact the city alderman. Contact information appears on the website. Or complete the electronic feedback form on the city website. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited. Good evening. I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. The United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could have the roll, please. Alderman Rapella? Here. Alderman Nichols? Here. Alderman Eisenach? Here. Alderman Sevnik? Here. Alderman Hammond? Here. Alderman Lewis? Here. Alderman Tom Grady? Here. Alderman Ted Grady? Here. All are present. Thank you. The first item on the agenda this evening is the report of department head, staff, and consultants. We have the minutes and the communications to receive this evening. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like for us to receive minutes A through N and communications O through S. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Ted Grady. Is there any discussion? Alderman Sevenick? Yes. Um, I would ask that uh, the director of the Parks Department um, kind of fill us in on the uh, bass tournament that's coming up, at the National Northern Regional Fishing Tournament. Yes, thanks for asking. And so some of those issues. So included in your packet is um, a memo kind of outlining that we will be hosting the 2023 Northern Regional um, Bass Nation Tournament. So this is one of five tournaments within the nation. And then um, based on who wins or who places within that, then they go to a championship from there. So we're very excited to host that here. It's from June 25th through the 30th. Um, we're expecting 80 to 90 bass boats to be included in, in this tournament. So you have a, you know, two fishermen, so you're talking a couple hundred people plus their families. We've been working with uh, Fox City's Visitors and Convention Bureau to put this together as, long, as well as the Bassmaster um, organization as a whole. We've worked with Menasha PD as well to put together a parking plan and an operations plan. So some of what we will be providing is potential assistance with traffic flow, especially in the evening or the late afternoon. Um, they do launch fairly early in the morning. Um, it, it's a wave of launches, so they don't go out at one time, they go out in waves and then they will be re returning in that same method. Um, once they return, they do a live weigh-in. People can certainly be part of that or, or watch that if they wish. And then they can leave the park at that time. The reason it's the 25th through the 30th, 30th is they do have a couple days in which they can come in and do practice fishing. The actual tournament itself is from June 28th through the 30th. So just those three days. Um, like I said, we did coordinate with Menasha PD on an operations plan because we do want to limit the interruptions. This is the middle of summer. There is construction um, or utility work happening around the park. We have coordinated also with the engineering department to make sure that the actual reconstruction of 3rd Street and Connemac doesn't begin until after the 4th of July. So the utility work is expected to be wrapped up prior to this tournament and then we won't start any actual reconstruction until after that. So there will be a window in there in which some of that machinery will be out of the way and we'll have um, access to that. Thank you. <laughs> Alderman Grady. Thank you, Mayor. On behalf of the <clears throat> Landmarks Commission, I just wanted to um, thank everyone that showed up for the public walk in co collaboration with the Historical Society. We had great weather. And um, Tammy Martin was the winner of our downtown um, gift card. And then everyone that attended got ice cream at Sweet Lair. So they were very happy. So thank you. 40-ish people? Roughly. 
Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Item F is public comments. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak today? Wishes? Yep, got it. Christopher Evenson, 523 Broad Street. Um, I just wanted to give you what I'll call the River Rat Report. And it primarily deals with the Racine Street Bridge. The first issue is that, especially with Doty to Doty Island to the downtown traffic, every vehicle crossing that bridge makes a huge clunk. Even cars make a clunk, but if you got a fire truck or a bus or a big truck with a trailer, it's a loud uh, clunk and it's a metallic clunk and it's got to be some type of vibration within the steel. It happens right where the bascule portions meet. We can hear it when it's a big vehicle, we can hear it inside of our house. We're two doors down from the bridge. So we're close, we're used to city noise, we're used to bridge noise, but not this noise. This tells me something needs to be looked at and investigated, certainly before the city takes ownership of this thing. Uh, it can't be good for the machinery itself, it can't be good for the concrete housing that this machinery sits in. Um, the second thing, the bypass navigational channel is not being used, is certainly not being used as it was advertised to us. Um, and we, we are retired, we sit out back and watch the river, it's the thing that we enjoy in life, okay? And Memorial Weekend was a perfect weekend to watch all of the boats go up and down. But boats that could go under the bridge itself, if they just lowered their antenna, aren't taking this, what we call the slot. Um, and right now, the gates are closed. This is a pond where we live now. And so you can understand if gates are open, maybe more boats are gonna go through and have the bridge open and close. But right now, you can, uh, you can kayak through there. You can kayak upstream. Talk to the bridge operator. He'll tell you, because we have, that there are tons of boats that are going through the bridge, causing it to open, that don't need to. They can go right through the slot, but it's not being used. Um, so there's something, whatever can be done to change that needs to be done. You can watch the film um, that they have of the traffic on the river. Um, the third thing just to report is there's no safety cable from the bridge to the shore to help prevent people or boats in distress go through the dam. We've been on the horn to the sheriff's office on 911 any number of times over the 27 years we've lived there and hopefully have prevented some people from uh, going through there. But without that safety cable, and you're allowing navigation, and now you're gonna have a bass tournament, um, that's a mean stretch of river, or can be, especially when the gates are open. So what's going on in that regard, I don't know. Um, so that's a river rat report, I'll be back in touch. Thank, thanks for bringing some of those things to our attention, Chris. We, do, we are aware of the noise, and we've talked to the DOT about that, and we're looking into that. I was not aware of the cable being gone, were you? So that's a good point to bring up, but we will talk to them about that as well. Cable. The safety cable. Yep, it should, should be back up. Anyone else? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kind of new to microphones here. Oh, no problem. <laughs> so, oh, well, you never know. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you guys who work really hard, um, especially you, Alder Woman Eisenach. Thank you so much for responding to my email. Um, I'm just coming here because uh, I live on 4th Street, 722 4th Street. My name is Mary Swadovsky, and um, we have a situation um, of a three... Um, stop sign intersection. Um, as you're aware on, four, well, maybe you probably don't drive down that way a lot, but on 4th Street, um, where it crosses Appleton Street, Appleton Street no longer goes through and you've just had the railroad tracks. So you have three stop signs there. Okay, take your house 
and put it on that block. Now, would you, would, would you get annoyed if every time you drove past there was a three-way stop and there's, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Um, my concern, I guess I should just say, my, my concern is that um, we have traffic stopped from um, the, the uh, God, I, I get east, west, whatever mixed up. But on the first side, on the second side across, and the third side, there is railroad tracks here. There's no reason for the traffic to have to stop on 4th Street. There's hardly any traffic that comes down to Appleton Street at the, uh, to, to turn left or right. A yield sign or a stop sign there would be more than sufficient. And I just ask if you guys just imagine it in your head so you can kind of see, you know, the intersection, you've got a three-way stop. Um, when there really doesn't need to be one on 4th Street, and it kind of, it, uh, I know a lot of people actually go through it. I don't. But a lot of people go through it all the time because it's just kind of a, I think something that was just forgotten or left over. So anyway, I really appreciate your time. And like I said, I, I appreciate you guys listening and all the work you guys do. I know it's a lot of work and I know office things and people's complaints aren't, aren't always the uh, best thing to listen to day after day. But I do, I know I vote all the time and I really appreciate all of your hard work and the consideration for some of us who don't know how to speak out. So thank you very much. Thanks for coming tonight. Anyone else? Good evening, Sandra DeBill Taylor, 545 Broad Street. Um, a lot on the agenda tonight. Really quick, under communications, Bird Scooter has their method of contact, whereas they want any complaints to go directly to Bird, either through their app or their website. Honestly, the average person is not going to do that. If they see it blocking a sidewalk, they're going to either call the city or their alderman. Additionally, by having Bird do it, I really question if the count would be accurate because they have control of the complaints that way. So how do you know that that's really going to be an accurate count of complaints? So I just wanted to bring that up. Under the check register, I had one question on page, page 8, Stanek Consulting, um, $42,000 for the Bonta parking lot and Whiting Mill. I'm assuming that's environmental testing or phase one ESA or phase two. What's the separation between the Bonta, which we own, and the Whiting Mill that we don't? If there could be some clarification from community development on uh, why we're environmentally assessing or whatever it is at Whiting Mill that we don't own. Then I just wanted to make a few comments regarding the Racine Street Bridge. Um, as my neighbor had mentioned, and I do want to thank the um, Landmarks Commission and the Menasha Historical Society for their tour of the downtown, and we did stop at the Bridge Tender House last Saturday. It was very enjoyable, thank you, and informative. Um, in addition to, he calls it a clunk or a clane, I refer to this noise as thunder. And the heavier the vehicle, the louder the thunder. And I know my husband has probably contacted every one of you regarding that, so I'm not going to go into that or the cracks. <laughs> but a few things I did want to bring up that may, may not have been mentioned is going through the Taco Street Bridge Tower. There is a step up when you first enter, and I don't think that is in compliance because it's a large step. Um, greater than your typical step that I don't think is... It either needs a step installed or a railing. Someone's going to exit or enter and break their ankle going in and out of there. Obviously, the tower is not made to be ADA compliant. Um, so that kind of is unfortunate for any employee, anyone that would want to be employed there. They wouldn't be able to apply. Um, there is a steel door leading to the basement that does not meet the steel frame. It is cocked open with no handle because you can't shut the door. Obviously, something is wrong above, has to be removed. Concrete block has to probably be busted out to replace this door. Um, and there's no communication currently with the Taco Street Bridge. Uh, they have to either call someone in or manually, physically 
drive down to the other bridge because of the remote control or remote operation is severed. Um, and my neighbor had mentioned, he called it the slot, the, the bypass clearance where the larger boats can get through without having to open the bridge. What I noticed is that there is no clearance marker. Where the drawbridge is, there's a marker that says the, the height, the clearance height that your boat could get through. If there was one on this bypass channel, maybe boats would know, hey, we can get through there. It, it might just be a math, uh, matter of training a few people and educating people that that's available. And then lastly, regarding the bridge, once ownership is transferred over and we do retain this bridge, I would strongly suggest that at that time we regulate operating hours, not operating hours, but opening hours. That peak traffic times, your lunch hours, your, your morning commute, your afternoon commute, because now this is the vast majority is recreational boating. It is not commerce anymore. And we can regulate the hours. It's done in De Pere, done in Oshkosh, um, that we are not having traffic, vehicular traffic backed up. So enough about the bridge. Um, quickly, regarding the Bass National Northern Regional Fishing Tournament, that sounds really exciting, coming to Menasha. Unfortunately, the website and the link provided by the Director of Park and Rec, it says Fox Cities. So if you Google Fox Cities, you get Appleton, Nina, Kakana, Fox Crossing. Um, from a marketing standpoint, when we want to welcome people to Menasha, show off Jefferson Park, all the work we're doing, to facilitate this event, and they can't say Menasha. Uh, to me, that's rather discerning. I know the Fox Cities Convention Bureau is working on it, but there we have no hotel, so we're not going to benefit from that. The, the most we can benefit is the bars and restaurants, but I do think that that is something that should be addressed, that the name Menasha gets in there somewhere. And then also, I am concerned because they are going to be um, kind of regulating the everyday boater from um, from leaving their, their boat launch or boat and trailer that the neighboring streets do not become congested with these boats and trailers of the, the everyday person that wants to be able to fish off of like the, the Manitowoc Street launch, that that whole neighborhood doesn't get impacted and also the way the park department has planned it is to use the green space at Jefferson Park that was the former um, armory. I was trying to thank you very much. As parking for this tournament, to me, that would require an ordinance change because we have regulations. You can't park on the grass. Um, then, quickly, we have the outdoor beverage permit applications for this year. Um, I just want to, now that the downtown is becoming much more residential than it ever was before, keep in mind that as popular as outdoor dining and outdoor music is, I feel in the years to come we're going to have more complaints because um, of all the number of residential property that is nearby. Um, in fact, some of these you ha cannot be within 100 feet of Residential property is exclusive residential property. Um, the outdoor dining cannot consist greater than 50% of the gross floor area of the enclosed building. Uh, the sound of its amplified sound cannot be heard more than 150 feet from the property line. And any property owner within 150 feet needs to be notified of, of this um, outdoor dining and outdoor music. I bring this to your attention because these businesses that are applying for this, there's like roughly, I don't know, 10, um, they have to come before the council. It has to be approved by you. They have to give a site plan. They have to comply with all this and their insurance. But we have one paragraph in our ordinance that I forgot to print out that totally bypasses this whole thing. And I want to at some point speak to the new chief of police because it gives him permission 
to just grant any bar that could be right next door to a home to, have, to expand their event into a, their parking lot. Music, beer, the whole thing. And to me, with no notification, nothing, the alderman doesn't even have to know. Um, and I would really like, I will forward you that text. I would really like to see that eliminated because it, it does not affect any um, non-for-profit or a church group or a, a church picnic or um, the Elks Club or anything like that because they can apply for a picnic permit. This is preventing a few bars in town that want to have parties outside in their parking lot. During the summer, I know they're popular and I'm not going to be a popular person for saying this, but it does infringe on those residential properties that are abutting or across the street. People do work shifts, people have kids, and even if they say, oh, well, it's just rental, hey, they have lives too. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else this evening? Seeing no one else, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion this evening or does anyone want items separated? Are you, did you want to comment, Alderman Nichols? Unless you want to do something different. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like just for us to move forward with the minutes, uh, both the Common Council minutes of 5-15-23 and the special Common Council minutes of 5-22-23. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did contact Clerk Newman this morning about this, so she is aware. On page three of the May 15th minutes, um, at the very top, it should say motion carried on roll call 5-2, uh, because that is the one where Alderman Eisenach abstained. And that is my correction for those minutes. Any other discussion? So we'll just take that as a correction, and Clerk Newman can fix that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Is there a motion for the street use application? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, at this time, I'd like for us to approve the street use application for Community Fest Parade of Lights, which is going to be on Monday, July 3rd. That's from 9 p.m. to 10.15 p.m. Uh, between the City of Menasha and City of Nina. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, I don't think we need a roll call for this. Correct? All those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. There's a second street use application. Alderman Sevenick. Whoops, wrong button. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like for us to approve the second application to Midwest Sunsplash. This will be on Friday, July 21st. Uh, from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. and Saturday, July 22nd from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And um, this is for Youth Go. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Rapella. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Do we have a motion for the city official newspaper? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the Post Crescent as the City of Menasha's official city newspaper for 2023-24, as recommended by the Administration Committee. Is there a second? second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Hammond. I'm going to make you do a roll call on this one. Motion carries 8-0. Item I is action items. Is there a motion for the accounts payable and payroll? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of May 12th through June 1st, 2023 in the amount of $3,716,796.11. 
Is there a second? Second. There's a motion, and I'm not sure who's the second. Ted? Okay. Any discussion? Did you have discussion? Yes, I do. I have discussion, and then I would like to um, remove a check from okay. the registry as well. My uh, discussion has to do with something that came up in public comments. It can either be answered by Director Sassman or Director Schrader, or both of you. Um, on combined page 33, it is check number 78192 uh, made out to Stantec, and it is noted in the captions that it is regarding the Bonta parking lot and the Whiting Mill. So some clarification on that would be appreciated. Certainly, uh, so this is uh, part of the EPA grant that the city received last year. So this is a $500,000 grant um, to be used over three years. Um, that grant, again, we did procure Stantec to kind of implement that grant for us. Uh, again, this is a community-wide assessment, uh, which is appropriate for communities um, that are beginning to address their brownfield challenges, as well as communities for ongoing efforts to bring site into productive reuse. And I read that directly from their website. Um, this, the grant is not for only City of Menasha properties. It is to alleviate potential concerns for redevelopment opportunities. Um, so oftentimes when you have these heavy industrial sites or adjacent to industrial sites or just any type of environmental concern, um, from a developer standpoint, um, they do they do not want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and then run into an environmental issue later. Um, so that is where this assessment grant uh, funds come into play, uh, where we can um, at least clarify or document what type of issues the site may have um, so they can budget for those going into it or to um, kind of write those uh, issues off to say there are no concerns with the site, which gives that developer the benefit and uh, to move forward with that site development. So it was part of the Brownfields assessment grant that was awarded the city um, a while back. Correct. Thank you. Other discussion? Yeah. And then you would like to separate one? Yes, I would like to separate check number 78182 for $50 made out to Jeff Nichols for his work on the Board of Review. Jeff is my husband. I'll be abstaining from that vote. So we'll take a roll call vote then on the accounts payable and payroll except that one check, and then we'll take a second vote on just the one check. So if we could have a roll call vote, please. Throw on a curveball at the new clerk. <laughs> Motion carries 8-0. So did you get the number? Should we just take voice vote? I'm going to give it to work <laughs> No, no, you're fine.
So we're just going to do a voice vote on this one. So we'll just have the clerk call the roll. Did it work? Oh, there it is. <laughs> just when we gave up, huh? Never say never. <laughs> There we go. Motion carries 7 0 with one abstention. Perfect. Item two is liquor license renewals for 23 24. The, <laughs> there is a list within your council packet of the establishments. Um, Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Seeing as the establishments listed have passed their inspections and no financial obligations are due to the city at this time, um, I move to approve the liquor license renewals for the 23-24 licensing year as listed in the clerk's memo dated June 1st, 2023. Is there a second? Second. It's a motion and a second by Alderman Tom Grady and Alderman Eisenach wants to abstain. Yes, please. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to probably abstain from two, three, four, and five of the action items. Okay. Please. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing no other discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 701 abstention. Item three is the outdoor alcoholic beverage service permit applications. Do we have a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the outdoor alcoholic beverage permit applications for July 1st, 2023 through June 20th, June 30th, 2024 for the establishments listed in the clerk's memo dated June 1st, 2023. Is there a second? Second. So motion and a second. Any discussion? Alderman Sevnik. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, when we established this, we had, um, unless it has changed on the two years that I was gone, um, they had to show actual pictures of the type of furniture that they were going to be putting out. So you may want to look at that. that was I mean, if they wanted to, they could throw a couch out there. Yeah. I think you that know. was just landmarks had to approve it though. We could, we'll look at it though. Yeah, because the, looking at this, these are cartoon drawings and it's ridiculous and it should be more professional and it should be taken more serious. So just uh, follow through then on that. So I believe there was a motion and a second? Mm -hmm. Correct, okay. Seeing no other discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries seven zero one abstention. Item four is the outdoor beverage service permit street serve. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. We have one applicant for this, um, and I move to approve the outdoor street serve permit for that business for the 2023 licensing year. Is there a second? So, second by Alderman Tom Grady. Any other discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 7 0, 1 abstention. Item 5 is a liquor license for the rusted roost. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the liquor license for Rusted Roost LLC doing business as Rusted Roost Restaurant and Bar at 192 Main Street for the term of June 5th, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Or is it, it is just 2023, isn't it? 
June. For one month, sorry. June 5th, 2023 through June 30th, 2023. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Grady. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 7-0, one abstention. Item six is an offer to purchase. Is there a motion? Alderman Seven. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like for us to approve the offer to purchase by a key property management LLC, include the addendum one and directing staff to draft and execute a land purchase and development agreement based upon the terms. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Pella. Is there a, any discussion? Do you have discussion, Stan? Yeah, I just thought I would read off the terms. Okay. So anyways, purchase would be 22,900. Uh, earnest money 2,000 within five days of acceptance. Binding acceptance date of June 6th. Closing on June 20th. And addendum one would be highlighted in number three through six and made part of. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to clarify, this is for 205 Matthewson Street. And um, Director Schrader, after the land purchase and development agreement is drafted, um, can we receive a copy of it in, as a communication? Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries, 8-0. Item K is ordinances and resolutions. The first is ordinance four. Is there a motion? Alderman Grady. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. At this time, I look for approval from the Park Board's ordinance 423 be an ordinance amending the title chapter 11 title 11 chapter 5 of the code of ordinances for allowance of consumption of alcohol at Barker Farm Park is there a second so a motion and a second by Alderman Rapella is there any discussion Alderman Nichols thank you Deputy uh, Chief Hancheck. I know there is um, a paragraph from the police department included in our communications about um, allowing alcohol to be served at Barker Farm Park. Does the police department have any concerns about this? No, we do not. That was prepared by Chief Thorne. He did confirm with me that if there were any questions, we support it. Um, he requested um, our analyst, Officer Denton Heidemann, to pull the numbers in that not only the park, but the surrounding areas to see if we are having any issues, and we do not, so we approve and support the new ordinance. Thank you. Seeing no other discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Oh, not there quite yet, okay. Motion carries 8-0. Item L is appointments. Uh, we do have three this evening. I would accept motions for them. Alderman Savanek. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll move for your reappointment of Becky Nichols to the Redevelopment Authority for a term of 6-5-23 through 9-1-27. And please help me with this next name. Alicia Buchler, I believe it is, Buchler. For your appointment to the Redevelopment Authority for a term as the same as stated above. Second. There's a motion and a second. Now we're gonna separate them, I'm guessing. <laughs> Alderman Nichols didn't want to vote on her own appointment. Just push the abstain button. I, but I would really like to vote for the appointment of the other person. 
I Thank you. Separate. Okay. And then I will abstain from voting for myself. <laughs> and I appreciate your support. <laughs> okay, so the first. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the first motion is just for the reappointment of Alderman Nichols. And seeing no further discussion, if we have a roll call vote. Motion carries seven, zero, one abstention. Okay, we'll move back to item two. Alderman Savick, did you make that motion then as well? Okay. And there was a second then as well, correct? Okay. Motion and a second. We don't need to take a roll call vote on this one then. All those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Item three. Alderman Hammond. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, can I get some help with this name as well? <laughs> the last name. His name's Ted. Well, I got that part. <laughs> Ted is seated in the back row. Great, great. Can you say that again, sir? Script check? Yeah. Oh, All right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor, I would like to uh, make a motion for the approval of your appointment for Ted Scruce check of the to the housing, yeah, to the housing authority for the term of 6-5-23 to 7-1-26. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion except for pronunciation? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? <laughs> the motion carries. Thank you, Ted, for helping us on the Housing Authority. Item N is public comments. Is there anyone who wishes to make a comment? Sandra DeVille Taylor, 545 Broad Street. Um, thank you for the clarification on the check register. Um, I was just surprised that the city was entering private property with these. Um, and I'm assuming we have some documentation in place that allows us to do that, I don't know. Um, it would be nice if the council has provided all the other private locations that you're interested in looking at with this grant um, so that those questions wouldn't come up again. And then lastly, I just, I didn't want to mention anything prior, but the, the appointment to the Redevelopment Authority, I just have to say this. I had requested to be on this RDA when Joe Lokes created it more than 20 years ago. The mayor knows that he's had letters from me and I'm glad that people come forward and want to be on these committees. I know there were vacancies for a long time. My phone never rang. The mayor doesn't really want someone to ask questions. So that's why I'm never appointed to anything as long as he's mayor. Thank you. Any other comments this evening? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. The University of Wisconsin Oshkosh Fox Cities campus assists the city of Menasha with video recordings of city meetings. Menasha residents and interested parties can get information about city meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents from the city website www.cityofmenasha-wy.gov. To express opinions about City of Menasha issues or these broadcasts, contact the Mayor's Office, 920-967-3608. Contact the City Alderman. Contact information appears on the website or complete the electronic feedback form on the city website. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited.